week on Perspective. Uprising, the future of Sudan. Day after day, week after week, they have come by the thousands, filling the streets of the Sudanese capital Khartoum and beyond. A protest sparked by economic hardship and a tripling in the price of bread has burgeoned into full-fledged revolution. The ouster and imprisonment of dictator President Omar al-Bashir, a military takeover and uncertain negotiations towards civilian rule. Yet again this week, the protests swelled, thousands more swarming into the capital from the countryside to bolster demands for democratic reform. <laughs> Joining them, rank and file members of the military, judges, doctors, teachers, lawyers, engineers, determined to keep up the pressure for a swift transition to democracy. Al Bashir came to power in a military coup 30 years ago and ruled with an iron fist. Political opponents faced torture and death. His country has fought two civil wars. For the conflict in Darfur, Bashir has been indicted by the International Criminal Court on charges of genocide and crimes against humanity. In the South, war ended with the secession of South Sudan in 2011. The economy of Sudan is in ruins. Inflation is rampant. Many cannot afford food or medicine. Bashir withstood uprisings before, but this time his own henchmen turned against him. On the program this week, we'll speak to one of the organizers of the protests. We'll also assess the broader implications and what may lie ahead. But we begin on the ground in Khartoum with Hala al karib a women's rights activist. She is the regional director for the Strategic Initiative for Women in the Horn of Africa. These protests have been going on for so long now. How would you describe the atmosphere in Khartoum? It's very, very intense, Alison. Um, I mean, um, the number of protesters are increasing every day. The protest is becoming more and more inclusive of all, um, you know, people from all walks of lives. Um, um, the, you know, the speed where people are really getting organized and trying to join in, and um, uh, the willingness and the interest of Sudanese people to amplify their voices and to make their voices heard after 30 years of, of, of repressions and, you know, and of silence. It's, it's just so, so amazing. But it's also intense and, um, you know, and it's, uh, uh, it's very, very important, you know, for, for the for Sudan Military Council, for the international community and for all actors of Sudan, you know, to hear the demands of, of Sudanese people and to take it seriously. Do you know, there was a time when people would be very afraid of m marching in the streets. Is there fear still? No, not anymore. Not anymore. You know, uh, people are extremely empowered. It's just the transformation is so amazing. Such a short time. And people are regaining their power every single day. You know, um, the protesters are occupying about four main streets in, um, in central Khartoum. And um, as I said, the numbers are increasing. Uh, all forms of associations, uh, you know, professional associations, student associations, victims of war, uh, you know, trade unions. Uh, it's just so amazing. So, no, there is no fear, but there is worries. Definitely people are worried. They are worried about the military council. They are worried about the lack of collaboration from the military council. And they are worried also about the position of the international community. I want to ask you a bit more of that. When you talk about the international community, what do you worry about? I worry about the fact that they assume that Sudanese people should accept you know, and compromise with uh, the NCB uh, regime, you know. Um, and, and the problem with that regime, it's a militant Islamist regime. So then these people, they realized, they understood that this regime should actually leave, you know, uh, completely leave to allow Sudan to build a democratic and civil state. You know, um, it's, uh, it's not a typical regime that can compromise, you know, or be part of any democratic forces. 
you know the the um, the NCB and 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 the the what's called the Salvation Regime or or, or whatever. You know they have a very clear ide ideology. They are militant Islamists. They are extremely disregarding of others. They don't believe in democracy. They don't believe in sharing power. And this is what we know as Sudanese and what we have experienced for the past 30 years. The problem is over the past 30 years, this regime has developed connection and affiliation to, to, uh, to the international community. And apparently they can, most of the internet, many international actors, they don't see you know, um, that, uh, that side of it, that this regime cannot be part of, of a democratic um, structure or democratic government. And, and, and this is the challenge, I think, you know, that we are, you know, we are facing with the international community, you know, um, um, 30 years uh, uh, they have been working with this regime. The regime has been very good acting as a proxy you know, on several issues like migrations, like, you know, counter to terror, but at the same time, they are maintaining their grip, you know, uh, a very strong grip on the country, and they play this dual game, you know, of, of sustaining their militant ideology and then uh, uh, satisfy um, the international actor. Yeah. Realistically, I know you've been an activist and a women's rights activist for a long time, but realistically, given how entrenched the regime is within the power structures in Sudan, do you think you can achieve what you, what you want, what you've exp expressed here? I mean, as, as, as women, we have been fighting, you know, um, and I think, you know, if, if any group that's actually contributes uh, contributed to the, uh, you know, to the defeat of this regime. I, I would say women, they played an instrumental role. Um, the militant Islamists of Sudan, they have used women, you know, uh, sort of to control and to manipulate society. And um, Sudanese women, they rejected that. They rejected that conspiracy from day one, and they fought against it. And, and I think, you know, every day we are gaining grounds. We don't think that will be the end of it. Um, even with uh, a democratic or civil government on the way, we think the battle is still ahead. But I think, you know, there is definitely a very deep transformation. And I don't think women are going to turn back. I thank you very much for your insight. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me.